Chapter 5, Tissue Organization, Part 2. So we are moving on to muscle tissue. Muscle tissue are cells that can contract. They get shorter. When they get shorter, they generate a force that allows for movement to occur. And usually these cells are stimulated by the nervous system, giving the commands for them to contract. So they cause movement, move actual body parts, arms and legs, can lead to things like contractions of the heart, can cause um, constriction within tube-like structures in the digestive system, urinary tract to move materials along. And there are three main kinds of muscle tissue, skeletal muscle tissue, cardiac muscle tissue, and smooth muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle tissue is, surprise, surprise, the primary tissue for the skeletal muscles, the muscles that are attached to bones. Uh, these cells are extremely long cylindrical cells, extremely long. They can be the full length of the muscle. And some of our muscles can be a foot or two long, so those are extremely long cells. They're often called muscle fibers because they're so long and thin. Skeletal muscle cells are multinucleated. They have multiple nucleuses per cell. So this, for instance, looking over here, each of these little dark dots represents nuclei. So there is a lot of nuclei per cell. Um, they also have striations. They have this alternating dark and light banding pattern that goes along their length. And they do not contract unless stimulated by the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system, the nervous system we voluntarily control. So the skeletal muscles tend to only work when we consciously want them to. Cardiac muscle tissue. Surprise, surprise, cardiac muscle tissue is found in the heart. In the middle layer of the wall of the heart, of the myocardium. Uh, they also have that striations, that dark light banding pattern. You can sort of see it in this um, uh, slide down here. Uh, the cells of cardiac muscle tissue are shorter and they are often bifurcated. They'll branch a bit. So shorter cells that branch. You know uh, when the cells come together, because when two cardiac muscle cells come together, there is a structure called an intercalated disc. So these dark lines here, these are representing the intercalated disc formed between cardiac muscle cells. These discs are dense with protein. This is specifically protein forming the desmosomes, the rivets that will firmly attach the cells together, and also gap junctions, the, the spaces, the protein structure spaces that allow fluids to pass between the cardiac muscle cells, which in this case helps to move the electric activity, the electric currents along cardiac muscle tissue. Cardiac muscle tissue is not in need of the nervous system. It does not need the nervous system to contract, and it is involuntary. We do not consciously have to think about our heart beating. And then smooth muscle tissue. Smooth muscle tissue lacks the striation. So it's called smooth because it does not have that dark light banding pattern. It's one nucleus per cell. And the cells are pretty short. They tend to taper at their ends. So wider in the middle where the nucleus is, tapering at the ends. Um, they are sometimes called visceral muscle tissue because they're found in the walls of our hollow organs. The walls of the intestines, the stomach, the airway, the bronchi, the trachea, found in the bladder, the uterus, blood vessels. And they help to move things, propel things through these hollow organs. And smooth muscle tissue is involuntary. We do not consciously have to think of them working. We do not have to think to ourselves, okay, upper part of the intestine, squeeze the food along. It does it on its own. All right, moving on to nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is in its category all by itself found in the brain, spinal cord, the nerves. The most famous cell of the nervous tissue is the neurons. Neurons are extremely large cells. They have large nucleus, very large cell body. They have all these processes coming off that will allow them to receive, transmit, process nerve impulses, electric currents along their plasma membranes. However, the neurons are not alone. There are also tons of other cells called glial cells. The glial cells, you can see them represented by these dark spots. These are their nucleuses. Glial cells are smaller. They do not transmit a nerve impulse. And they're more numerous. There's more of them in nervous tissue. They help to protect, nourish, and support the neurons. So they're very important for the function of nervous tissue. 
So a neuron has a large cell body where the metabolic functions occur. It has short processes called dendrites that are receptive, receive signals, and a long process called an axon that is able to transmit that neural impulse down to the next set of cells. All right, connective tissue. Connective tissue is the most diverse, most abundant kind of tissue. Extremely varied from loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, cartilage, bone, and even blood. And we're going to talk about the various categories. So, cells found in connective tissue. They uh, have cells specific to that tissue, adipose sites are in adipose tissue, chondrocytes and cartilage, osteocytes and bone. The cells are rarely in contact with each other. Usually there's lots and lots of extracellular material, lots of extracellular matrix. And these cells can be resident cells that permanent stay there or wandering cells that come and go. So resident cells include fibroblasts. Fibroblasts produce the extracellular uh, matrix. They are present in the loose and dense connective tissues, they produce the fibers, protein fibers, the ground substance. Adipocytes, again, the fat cells in adipose tissue. Fixed macrophages that stay in the tissue to engulf any pathogens via phagocytosis. And then we have the wandering cells. They come and go. Most of the wandering cells have immune-related functions. There's the mast cells. The mast cells lay close to blood vessels, and they can secrete substances to inhibit blood clotting. They can secrete substances to allow dilation of blood vessels, such as histamine. Uh, plasma cells produce antibodies. Free macrophages roam around, again, aging phagocytosis to engulf pathogens. And other kinds of white blood cells also can come and go. Protein fibers. There are protein fibers in the extracellular matrix of most connective tissues. There are three types, collagen fibers. Collagen fibers are unbranched, thick, cable-like protein fibers. They are strong and flexible. They can resist stretching, resist forces. They are made up of collagen protein, and they make up the bulk of tendons and ligaments. Particular fibers. Particular fibers are much thinner. They are uh, interwoven, they branch a lot. Um, they end up forming meshes or frameworks inside of structures. They're tough but flexible. And they're found in places like the inside of lymph nodes, spleen, the liver. And it turns out they're also made of collagen proteins. And then elastic fibers. Elastic fibers also branch. They're rather wavy in um, shape. And they uh, are able to stretch and recoil or return to the original shape easily. So they can stretch out and then return to their natural shape. They're important for structures that experience stretching, such as skin, the lungs, blood, major arteries, all stretching and then returning to their normal shape. Ground substance. The ground substance is the material between the cells and around the protein fibers. It can be a lot of different things, very diverse. So usually water is involved and large molecules. They could be carbohydrates with amines, glycosamine glycans. They can be carbohydrates with amino acids, proteoglycans, or they can be proteins with carbohydrates, adherent glycoproteins. So usually some mix of some kinds of those materials. They surround the cells in the protein fibers, and the extracellular matrix is the ground substance plus the protein fibers. It can be solid, as in bones, semi-solid, as in cartilage, fluid, as in blood. And again, collagen protein, very important. Collagen fiber is very important, but we need vitamin C to produce collagen properly. So scurvy is when you do not get sufficient vitamin C for a very long time. This can lead to weakening of the body as a whole. It can lead to gum ulcerations, hemorrhaging in the gums, abnormal bone growth hemorrhaging in other parts of the body. And as you can see, bruising in the skin. And again, to treat it, you just start adding vitamin C back into the person's diet. Functions of connective tissue. Well, there's a lot. Protective, physical protective functions, bones and adipose tissue can protect underlying organs. It can be structural or support functions. Bones and cartilage can help to give the body shape. They can bind structures, ligaments and tendons, uh, storage, bone store minerals, adipose tissue store uh, 
lipids, triglycerides, transports, just the blood moving things around, and immune protection because there is so many uh, leukocytes, so many immune response cells found in the connective tissue. Loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue has very few cells, very few protein fibers, lots of ground substance. So they often make good packaging material supporting other structures. Three types, areolar, adipose, reticular. Areolar connective tissue has collagen and elastic fibers, as you can see, scattered about, have lots of blood vessels, and lots of scattered cells. So the dark spots represent the nucleuses of fibroblasts. They're found in the papillary layer of the dermis, so found in the dermis of the skin. They are also in the subcutaneous layer underneath the skin, and they surround many organs, surround nerves and muscle cells, surround blood vessels, so very important packaging material. Adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is made up of adipocytes, which look like big empty circles, but the empty parts of those circles is where the triglycerides, the lipids, are being stored. And you can occasionally see a nucleus here and there. Not much ground substance, not much protein fibers, lots and lots of adipocytes. They are storing energy, they act as insulators to prevent heat loss, and they can act as packaging and cushioning by surrounding structures, protecting structures from forces. Found in the subcutaneous layer and surrounding various organs, such as the kidneys. Reticular connective tissue has reticular fibers. And fibroblasts, leukocytes, they form a mesh. So you can see the reticular fibers sort of stretching out, giving us this mesh-like structure with spaces to allow things to pass through. They form structural framework for many lymphatic organs, spleen, thymus, lymph nodes, bone marrow. Dense connective tissue. Dense connective tissue has lots and lots of protein fibers, very little cells or ground substance. And there's dense regular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue, and elastic connective tissue. Here is dense regular connective tissue made with tons of collagen fibers. So all this sort of pinkish wavy structures, these are all collagen fibers densely packed together, all going in the same direction. So they re can resist forces in one direction. They're found in some blood vessels. Oh, they have very few blood vessels, sorry. They have very few blood vessels, so they take a long time to heal. The dark spots are the nucleuses of fibroblasts that make the collagen fibers. Places you can find dense regular connective tissue, tendons, and ligaments because they're resisting forces in a specific direction where the muscles attaching to bone or the bones attaching to another bone. Dense irregular connective tissue has large clumps, large bundles of collagen fibers, but now they're going in all kinds of directions, every direction. So we're seeing those collagen fibers being cut in all kinds of cross sections. The uh, dense irregular connective tissue is able to resist stresses in many directions, provide good support. They have lots of blood vessels. They're found in the dermis of the skin, in the periosteum around bones, perichondrium around cartilage, and in the capsules that form an outer structure around many internal organs. Elastic connective tissue is made up of densely packed elastic fibers. So these wavery lines here are the elastic fibers. You can Dark spots with the fibroblasts. They're able to stretch and then recoil, so stretch out and return to the original shape. Found in things like the large arteries, trachea, the vocal cords. And that's where we will stop for this part of the lecture.